that evening I did the fire walk. Now I could walk a few steps with help at that time and I was absolutely chucked a little mint balls that I had managed to walk the fire walk. But as I sat down in my wheelchair, the guy behind me was a double amputee. He tipped himself up onto his hands and he walked the hot coals on his hands. And in that moment, I realised that I was self-limiting. And so that night I booked my flight and I booked my uh, ticket to the course. I did all of Tony Robbins' courses, became a senior leader. I uh, travelled the world and I am eternally grateful to this guy. I have no idea who he is. And I've shared this story because for me, he helped me recognise that I was limiting. And for me, part of eternal optimism is to look at what you can do rather than what you can't. Well, this has been a, a really amazing journey you've taken us on so far today, Gina, and I really appreciate it. I would love to invite you into our wrap-up section, which is ding, 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 the lightning round of questions, uh, of which I have three questions okay. uh, to wrap things up. First, I'd love to ask you, when you hear the title of our show, The Eternal Optimist Podcast, what does eternal yeah. optimist or eternal optimism, what does that mean to you, Gina? It means that you look for the opportunities, that instead of looking for all the things that go wrong, that you actually look for what you can do rather than what you can't. Mm. Have I got time to share a little story? Absolutely. So in 2005, six, I um, became a master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming. And I wanted to go and see as many people doing it as possible. And I ended up um, at the Excel Centre in London on uh, uh, Unleash the Power Within with, with Tony Robbins. I have to say, I was quite cynical when I went, you know, big American, very loud. I thought, you know, it's going to be all hype. How wrong could you be? In the morning, he was talking about a course in California, and I really fancied it. But even though I'd traveled the country working, I'd run my school from a wheelchair, I didn't have, an, at that time, an electric travel chair. And I thought, I won't be able to do that. And I dismissed it. And, you know, the thing being, that when I traveled around the country, I used the same taxi driver. He would take me to where I was going, wait for me, bring me back. So I just dismissed it out of hand. That evening... I did the fire walk. Now, I could walk a few steps with help at that time, and I was absolutely chucked a little mint balls that I had managed to walk the fire walk. But as I sat down in my wheelchair, the guy behind me was a double amputee. He tipped himself up onto his hands, and he walked the hot coals on his hands. And in that moment, I realised that I was self-limiting. And so that night I booked my flight and I booked my uh, ticket to the course. I did all of Tony Robbins' courses, became a senior leader. I uh, traveled the world and I am eternally grateful to this guy. I have no idea who he is. And wow. I've shared this story because for me, he helped me recognize that I was limiting. And for me, part of eternal optimism is to look at what you can do rather than what you can't. And we all self-limit. So my challenge to your listeners is, how are you self-limiting at the moment? And how can you expand, use that optimism to expand your horizons? Wow. Wow. That, yeah, that was uh, definitely worth the time to hear that story, Gina. Thank you. That was amazing. Um, uh, next pleasure. question. Uh, I'd love to go to, is there any particular, let's just say a song or a movie, maybe a song and a movie that might inspire you, give you energy? Uh, what might be a song and a movie for you? Goodness me. Got terrible memory for names. You're welcome to sing Certainly it, movies, by the way. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I think something like Erin Brockovich, you know, looking at yes. somebody where all of the odds were against her. Uh, there wasn't a song in the movie, but certainly the movie, uh, how being persistent and knowing what was right 
you know, her level of integrity about it when the big boys were all fighting dirty and that she was going to get on and she was going to do it. And I, for me, watching that, I think, is something that's so inspiring. Mm. I hit the nail on the head there. I love that movie. I remember that one. Um, well, I'd say last question here. If there are uh, one or two books that you'd recommend that have had an impact in your world, outside of your own collection, your own library of books you've written, uh, if there are any other books out there, one or two that may have impacted you, what are they? Uh, one would be um, Johan Hari's Lost Connection, which talks mm. about depression. Not that mm. I suffer from depression, but I, what an amazing book around how we deal with depression in entirely the wrong way and looking at the causes of depression. Uh, so that had a profound effect. And I suppose for me, uh, this, The Eighth Habit by Stephen Covey, um, the seven habits were amazing, but the eighth habit is something that resonated so much with how I was operating and how I believe we should operate. Um, and so that's something that that shaped me, the seventh habit, which I read many, many years ago, and then the eighth habit when it first came out. That and it wasn't that it that it was teaching me to do something different. What it did is it, it really confirmed for me what I had been doing. Mm. 